I want to show you how to use C Sharp in order to connect to the ActiveX Data Objects or ADO.NET API. So first of all, I need to have a database. So I have an SQL Express database and I have a Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio application open so I can go ahead and create this database. So I'm going to add a new database and this one's going to be my people database. And in my people database, I need to have a table for my data. So I'm going to just do a new table. And I'm going to have this be my people table. So I need a person ID. And I make that an integer. And then I'm going to have a display name. And I'll have that do... Uh, the end bar char 255 so a nice long name all right so at this point i can go ahead and save this and i am going to save this as my people info table so i've got that all good i can now refresh that and i can go in and put data into this so I'm going to do a new query, and I'm going to insert into people info values. And I don't need very much data. I just need a few records. So I've got Alice, and insert into people info values. Bob. All right, now I have two records, which is enough so we can see how this works. I'll go ahead and execute that, put them in there. I can right-click this table right here, and I can select the top, well, 1,000 rows, and I can see the top two. So at this point, I am good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project now. So I'm going to create a new project, and this is going to be my... Let's call this my people list. So I create my people list project. In the projects, in order to be able to communicate with the database, I need to add some stuff. So first of all, I'm going to go up to, where is it? My tools and my NuGet package manager. And so I go manage NuGet packages for solution. And I'm going to go ahead and browse for and install the Microsoft .data .sql client. All right, so this one right here. And I just selected for this entire project and I can install it. If you can't find this version, you can find the latest one that will work and install that. Click OK at this box right here and accept and it will start the installation process. After it finishes, you can go ahead and close the NuGet solution. And now we have the ability to use it. Normally what you do is you'd create extra classes to use, but because I just want this to run, I'm going to make it nice and quick and just make it there. So I'm going to go ahead and make something to display my data. So I'm going to have a list view. So drag that over here. And then I can double click on this. And on the form load is where I'm going to put most of my data. So what I want to do is load. When the form loads, I want to be able to load information. So I need a connection string. So I like to save it outside of the code. So I put it in this app.config file. And so you just kind of run to the end and add a little section in here for my connection strings. So you can type in connection strings. And inside of connection strings, I want to add a name. And this can be any name you want, but 
I'm going to call this my people string. And inside of the people string, oops, I have a connection string. And my connection string is equal to the following information. So I want a data source. And because I am using a server, I'm going to do local host and it's going to go over the network to local host. And it's going to be my SQL Express. So I'll go in there. And I want the initial catalog to be the name of the database. Initial catalog equal. And if we remember, the name of the database was people. Now, I'm going to have certificates that the server is going to give me, but I don't necessarily trust it. And so if you have a trust relationship set up and you have your security certificates, your SSL certificates in place, that's fine, but I don't have one. So I'll do trust server certificate equals true. So I just say accept it anyway. And then I want my integrated security. equal to true. All right, so this is all I need for my connection string. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then I'll jump back over to my form. Now, in order to make the form work, I need to have, well, I need to be using my Microsoft Data SQL client. So I'll be using Microsoft dot data SQL client. Also, in order to use my configuration, I just put into the app dot config file. I need to have that in there as well. So I need to do a using statement for that using my system dot configuration. At that point, I can use the configuration from the configuration file the app.config file in my application. So I'll go ahead and make a, a private variable here. Private. So private, make this a string, and this will be my connection string. And the connection string is going to get it from the configuration manager. configuration manager dot con connection strings and the connection string I believe was people string let me go check that real quick it was people string right there so I put people string right here dot connection string so that will bring the connection string over and put it into this local variable here. Now, when I want to connect up, you want to, well, make a connection. So I'm going to start with a SQL connection and I call it connection it equals a new SQL. SQL connection, and I need to pass it the connection string. That I use to then, well, connect to it. All right, the next thing I want to do is after I have my connection string and I have the connection created, I want to go ahead and open the connection. So. Then I want to create a select statement. So I will make a string. And let's do this as SQL text is going to be equal to uh, a select. And if we look back into what we have in the database, we have 
person ID and display name. So we want to select the person ID and the display name from, and then we jump back to the database again, and we say, well, what's the name of the table? It is people info. People info. And that is all we need for the SQL statement. Then I want to create a command. So I've got an SQL command. And my SQL command, I'll call it command, is a new SQL command. And I'm going to pass it both the SQL text and my connection string. At that point, I am ready to actually execute the command. So I'll create a reader. So my SQL re data reader. Data reader. And we'll call that reader. And that data reader is going to be from my command. But I'm going to execute the reader. There are other options you can use in addition to execute reader. You could have um, ones that don't return any values. Sometimes when you are running, your query has no results. Um, or sometimes you want just a single result. The execute reader brings back the whole list. Uh, execute non-query, if you use that one, um, it just returns an integer number of rows that are affected. So if you're going to insert stuff or update stuff, you'd use an execute non-query. And if you want a single one, you can do execute scalar to get just a single bit of text back. All right. And now I've got this reader. I'm going to now do something with the data. Do something with data. And then after I do something with the data, I want to close the connection. All right, so I want to put the data onto on a page somewhere. So we go back here, and what do we have? We have this form or this list view. Let's make this list view a little bit bigger, and let's shrink this a little bit so the form matches up a bit better. And my list view is called list view one. I don't have any columns yet, so I wanted to change this, and um, I can edit the columns here. I'm going to add some columns. So the first column heading I can leave the name the same, but the text I'll say is a person ID. And then I'll add another one, and I will make this one my display name. I can change width and other things like that, but I'll just keep that the same. All right, I don't see these columns yet, so I'm going to go over to the other side to appearance, and I find the appearance section somewhere. There we go. And I'm going to change the view from large icons to details. And now I can see the person ID and the display right there. All right. It's currently called list view one and maybe I want it to be something else. And so if I want to change it to list view from me, list view one to something else, I can go ahead and change this and I'll just call it LST people. All right. So now I'm ready to populate this. So I'm going to go back to my code back here and I'm going to put the data that I receive from my SQL query into that LST people. So first I'm going to do LST people and I'm going to take all the items and I'm going to clear them because I like to clear things even though it's nothing, there's nothing should be there. And then I'm going to, while I'm iterating over this list, put things into, well, where it should be. 
So I have a while loop, so while reader dot read. I'm going to well figure out what I have. So I've got a LST people items. And I'm going to add the con well, so the, the first person there, right? And that'd be my reader. And then in quotes I can put the name of the column. So that'd be person person ID. I believe that's what I requested right there. Yeah, I got person ID right here. And I can take that and put it into this right here. And it's person there. And I'm going to have to to string that. All right. And then after that, I want to put the next field in there. And that would be my LST people. And I need to start keeping track of the items, I guess. So I will go up here and have an integer and I equal zero. And then this one right here could be my items i dot sub items dot add and then I want my reader again and this time it's going to be my display name and then I want to two string that one as well and put it in there and then increment my i I plus plus. All right, that way, each time I read, I can put in the reader data, so the person ID in there as the as the item, and then as a sub item, so the second column, I'm going to put the display name. So this looks good. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. What we have now is we have person ID with a display name, person ID with a display name. There are lots of different ways you could do this, but this is just to get you so you can read data and know how to actually run a query against the database to get information and pull it in.